Welcome to Evolution of Self with me, Britannia. Hello. So I've been pondering something. <laughs> I'm very, very lucky where I live. I live in this most beautiful place that I can step out of my door and go walking. But there's one field that I've walked through quite a number of times. And the first time I walked through it, I remember being kind of just noticing that there, it was, it's got, the field's got horses in it. And um, I tend to, <laughs> one of the things I love to do is to chat to animals when I'm out on my walk. And quite often I call them over and um, pet them and they tend to lick my hands and whatever else. And the reason I'm sharing this with you is because this particular field, when I walked through it, the horses didn't even lift their heads to even really acknowledge me, which is unusual. And at first I just thought maybe I wasn't in the right energy, maybe I wasn't grounded or whatever it was and I was giving off the wrong vibe. But I've walked through that field a number of times since and they never show any interest in saying hello or coming over or being curious. And what I realised, so my mind started working and wondering what was going on, and what I realised is that the grazing that they're on is very sparse. There's barely any grass at all, and what grass there is is cropped really, really short, which made me start thinking about survival and how these horses obviously don't have an excess of food. And every time I go there, they're grazing. They're never standing under a tree, just enjoying the shade or, you know, doing anything other than just constantly grazing. And this got me sort of pondering about the similarities between how they live and how um, survival affects us as humans in our lives. And I think it's very similar. I think that when we're in survival mode, we're just focused on surviving. We're focused on what we need to do to ensure that we'll survive. And there's very little time for joy and um, curiosity and all of these things. And... When we're in the survival mode and we're focused just on surviving and we don't have this space for anything else, it exacerbates and it creates more of the same because without curiosity, without joy, you don't attract those things into your life. So like for instance with these horses, because they're solely focused on eating and surviving, they don't allow the connection and the warmth that companionship would offer. Because they don't tend to look up and come over, they don't have that interaction. Uh, most animals, when they come over, it's normally quite a mutually enjoyable experience. <laughs> Otherwise, they wouldn't come over if they didn't enjoy it. And so these horses deny themselves that kind of interaction, that joy, that warmth, that connection that you get with people, other horses or whatever it is. And... I imagine, well, I know that us as humans do the same thing, that when we're in survival mode, we kind of cut ourselves off and we end up quite isolated. And so if anyone who is or recognises that they have been in survival mode, then what I would suggest is that you lift your head up. <laughs> you take a look around and you try to connect with people in your world because the more people you connect with, the more opportunities you get, the more support you have, the more love you have and the less disconnected and on your own you'll feel. Try and imagine what life would be like if you were a little bit curious, if um, you allowed your curiosity to bubble up inside of you and to take it where, where it will. Um, and curiosity can be about all sorts of things. It doesn't need to cost money. It can just be simply sitting in a field and watching the clouds and just enjoying and marvelling at them like I did this morning. <laughs> and it's also to look for the things that give you joy because when you're in survival mode, life can look pretty bleak and it can feel very lonely and it can feel very depressing. But if you focus on all the issues and the challenges and the depression and the how hard it is, you're just going to feel even heavier and more life will feel even less light and less enjoyable. But if you choose to rather focus or try to find five things every day that are wonderful, beautiful, um, that give you joy, that make you happy, make you smile. And there's so many things that you can choose from. I mean, I'm lucky, as I've said, I can walk out my door and I've got beautiful walks. And every single day I go out, the sky is different, the weather's different, the, you know, it's just, I love it. And it gives me immense amount of joy to be able to do that. And it's free. Um, I also enjoy some comedy things. And <laughs> 
maybe not everyone will share my <laughs> my taste in comedy. But nowadays with the internet, you can go onto YouTube and you can find any number of comedians, little skits and things like that that will give you joy. Um, Netflix and stuff have movies. Try and find things that make you feel happy and f feel glad and hopeful about life. Connect and talk to people that lift you up, that help you to see the positive in life. And wherever you go and whatever you do, just keep in mind to look for things that make you feel happy. I hope this helps. Um, I know that it can be pretty bleak when you're in survival mode and there's life can seem pretty daunting. So I hope that this gives you a little bit of spark of joy, of light, and that you are able to, to feel a little bit lighter and a little bit more able to enjoy life. In case you're interested in working with me, I am a consciousness coach. Uh, my website and my social media are down below in the links. And if you send me a message through any of them, I will definitely connect back with you. Um, I also do free chemistry calls, should you be interested, and just to see if it's something that you would like to do by working with me. And I also have um, online courses, which you can find on my website, should you be interested. So much love from me to you and have a fabulous week. Bye bye.